Wait, is that me on camera? It's been a while. Don't forget, Sunday. That's right. This coming up Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be live. Before I get into the video, like always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down. Let me go ahead and give you a hint to what this is going to be about so you can give it a thumbs down if you disagree. What do you mean? Bernard Hopkins is always right. He's always right. How can you disagree? And if you really like the video, go ahead and sub to the channel because that is what helps me out the most. Also, when you sub, hit that notification bell. That way you can get updates when I drop the latest content like this. Now, you could have read it without me having to give a hint, but pretty much this is a quote from Bernard Hopkins. This is what he says he believes will happen when AJ and Fury fight. He says, it'll be a draw, and that'll and they'll fight a second time. We already know they're going to fight a second time because they have a two-fight deal. And the second time, Joshua would beat him, Hopkins said. I'm going to go with this one. The first fight is going to be a draw, I'm telling you. The second fight, Joshua wins. But the first fight will be a draw because it's going to be hard to score. And that's when the controversy comes in with who got the rounds. The second fight will happen and Joshua is going to win. I figure Joshua makes the adjustments, figure him out, and realizes he's got to go for the body instead of the head. <laughs> and then he will fall. The head will hit the knees. Bow! Hit that old school Miguel Cotto body work that he abandoned later in his career. Very weird. But anyways, so... Do I agree or disagree with this assessment? I disagree a thousand percent. I don't think this fight can be a close fight. This isn't going to be the type of fight to where both men are going to land equally. Because that's what's going to have to happen to have a draw. Both men will have to land punches very equal for you to argue that this round could go that way or that way, they'd have to practically be swing rounds with a few rounds for one, for sure, a few rounds for the other, for sure. I don't think that this fight goes that way. See, here's the thing. Fury is going to outbox AJ if he's going to win. He's not going to do what he did to Deontay Wilder. He's not going to be able to do it. He could try. He could bum rush in there. But if AJ comes in there, especially a little bit heavier in his 250s, he's going to sit Fury down. Fury cannot get into a firefight with AJ. So that takes away the brawling at, um, aspect of the fight. If they can't brawl, then that's one aspect of it being very close taken away. Now, what AJ cannot do is jab with Tyson Fury. In my opinion, I believe off of what I've seen with the eye test, Fury is faster on his feet. We know he's taller, and we know his arms are way longer. We know Fury likes to lean, and we know he's very mobile. So what AJ cannot do is allow it to go to range, because if it goes to range, I think it's going to be pretty cut and dry. Fury's going to outbox him from a distance. AJ has to close the gap. So I think if it stays at range, it's going to be very easy to score for Fury. And if it gets to the inside and stays on the inside, I don't think it goes 12 rounds because Fury's not a Parker, okay? Fury is not a guy who can claim, I've never been dropped. Keep in mind, Parker had never been dropped when he fought AJ. So that's not what Fury can claim. Fury has notoriously been knocked down through sparring, through amateurs, through training, He's been knocked down in the pros. Damn near almost got knocked out in the pros. So we know if a hard, clean punch can land on Fury, he will fall. Now, he's always gotten back up. Nobody's ever kept him down, to our knowledge. So with that being said, I don't see how Fury can get into a close-range battle with somebody as skilled as Anthony Joshua with the hands. And the thing about it is, although Fury wins rounds on points, he normally does it by, I don't want to say lulling the other person to sleep, 
But when he fights at range, he always seems to slow down the pace of the fight. They fight to his pace, which is not that active. When it gets to close range, AJ, I believe, has the much faster hands. I believe AJ can unload the, the punches much quicker than Fury can. Fury, to me, for his speed, relies on body. So what do I mean by body is him jumping across, him using the momentum of his body to fire shots off from the back forward. With So pretty much, <laughs> I'm trying to explain this. Let me stand up. So pretty much what I mean is like, Hand speed is just straight here, how fast you can throw punches, right? A body punch, what makes it fast, it kind of goes back to the jab, how I said that a proper jab should be landed on the toe. But what speeds it up is when you move. You're moving with it. So it's the punch is moving at the speed of your body plus the speed of the arm projecting forward. That, to me, is where Fury gets his punch speed from because even if you watch against... Um, Deontay Wilder, his punches were not that quick when he was throwing them from the pocket and he couldn't use that body to move. So with that being said, in the pocket, I think AJ's the much faster fighter. If it gets to the pocket, it's going to look like what Ruiz did to AJ, except AJ would do that to Fury because I think the hand speed is that much different. I think AJ is that much faster with his hands. Plus, his arm or his reach is shorter, so that means the recoil is less to pull him back, which is even better when you're close. That's why shorter guys always like to get up, get up close to taller guys for two reasons. One, the taller guy, once you're close, can't keep you at the end of his punches. So that means he's not generating any force when he's hitting you. It's very little force being generated. Now, what you got to be careful of when you're shorter is since... Uh, 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 a tall guy's kind of trying to T-Rex arm you. You got to watch for him to lean back so he can cock and tore. Or you got to watch for them legs to throw pretty much uppercuts at you once you're up close. Hooks, you're not really that scared of being shorter because you can just step inside of a hook and put pretty much your head on their chest. AJ would probably be around his chin for the height difference. But... You, you can get close, and a tall man can't really do hooks. It's uppercuts is what you got to be most fearful for when you're shorter. So that's one thing that it does when AJ gets close. It keeps him within range of the end of his punch, but Fury can't pop off at the end of his punch. It takes away power. The second thing that ends up happening is when the taller guy throws a punch all the way out, it takes longer for him to recoil. Whereas the shorter fighter is going to be faster because his arms are shorter, so they have less distance to travel going out and less distance to come back. So therefore, they're going to be able to put their combos together a lot better, a lot quicker. So, which also makes me believe that up close, mid-range, AJ has the significant advantage in speed. I think AJ puts combinations better, way better. He does them way better, puts them together way better. Like, I can't say it enough, way better. So, again, I don't see this fight being a draw. Now, could AJ win in the second fight? <clears throat> yeah, it's possible. He could adjust better. It's hard for me to say that he would adjust better because I feel like Fury in rematches adjust better than AJ does, if that makes any sense. I mean, we saw AJ give Ruiz the rematch, and he adjusted well. He tactically came with the right thing, danced around him, kept him at bay. There was nothing he could do. He couldn't get in on AJ. I just feel like as good as AJ is, if it comes down to in-ring IQ, I think Tyson Fury is the smarter fighter. I think... Tyson Fury is one of them people that's like a Floyd Mayweather. He's very adaptive, and you can see him change the way he fights while the flow of the fight is going on. Whereas AJ, I don't really see him adapting in the fight. AJ, to me, is very good at implementing a game plan, but if that game plan doesn't go to the game plan, well, he only sticks to that game plan. He doesn't really fix things from what I've seen inside the ring whereas fury 
He comes in with a game plan, and then his game plan changes as the fight changes. So, again, I, I, I would say that if it was a draw in the first one, if Hopkins is right, I would put my money on Fury winning the second fight. However, like I said, in my mind, I see this going one of two ways. Fury's going to keep AJ at range, at bay, with ease, and AJ's going to lose. I mean, it's not going to be – to the eye test, a casual fan who's never seen boxing, it's going to be very easy to score. I'm not – seeing where AJ is going to land a lot of punches and I'm seeing, you know, Fury just hitting him with the jab, jab, an occasional straight here or there, moving around him when AJ gets close, tying him up, let the referee separate, jab, jab, throw the occasional straight when AJ gets in, holding him. I just see a, I don't see him fighting AJ much different than he did Vladimir Klitschko. I really don't. I, I pretty much see tactically that's the way that he'll fight. So I think that if he stays to the game plan, like I said earlier, it'll be as clear as day that Tyson Fury will win on the scorecards round to round with ease. However, if AJ closes the gap and can stay mid to close range, I think AJ is going to land <laughs> too many punches for them to be swing rounds. I just think he's going to outland Fury mid to close. I, I think... I would say for every one punch in that range, Fury lands, I see AJ landing two to three. I, th I think he's going to outpoint him by two to three punches every time they're tight. Because I just, like I said, and, and to me, AJ, he's got a lot better balance than Fury. I'm going to do a full breakdown before this fight happens, if it happens, because we don't know what's going to happen with Dillian White and Fury. Fury very well could lose. And AJ very well could lose to Pulev. And who knows? Wilder might beat Fury in the third fight if they fight. And it won't happen because of that. But I will do a full breakdown of how I see it going. I didn't want to get too much into that. I'm just trying to explain my point of view and my reasoning. Why I see it the way I see it. And as far as the second match goes, I... I, I if AJ beats him significantly in the, and can stay on top of Fury, I don't see Fury being able to do anything different in the second fight. I see AJ pretty much winning the second fight like he won the first fight because the thing is, no matter what Fury does tactically, if he can't stay away from AJ and AJ can cut off the ring and stay on top of him with ease, there's not much he can do differently in the second fight but try to fight more in the pocket and then – risk the knockout so with that being said I, I i think if aj can cut off that ring well then he'll win both fights hands down however the flip side of that is if fury can stay away with ease out jab him and straight him for 12 rounds straight i don't see any way aj can make an adjustment maybe aj could try to come in lighter to speed up his feet but at the same time <clears throat> when fury's 270 something and we don't know how much bigger he's going to get because he's six foot nine i can tell y'all this right now the man was 400 plus pounds carried that weight for a very long time he got down to 250 he said he felt weak he got up to 270 said he felt better he still looked very very small for 270 he looked very small now Fury's body build is a little deceptive because he's so soft looking that he looks out of shape, but he's not. But if you look at how small his arms, his forearms, his calves, his thighs, his back, how narrow he is from the side, how, how narrow is, he's not very wide. So I don't know how heavy Tyson Fury could get before it affects his mobility and agility. Um, from what I saw though, he carried that 270 very easily and I, I, I think he could get heavier. So when AJ, if AJ loses the first one and his goal is to get faster on his feet, to get closer to, to Fury, I don't know how much that's going to help him because if Fury say can get up to 280, 290, 
wouldn't want him much more than 290, but if he could get up to 290 and hold it like his baby weight, you know, that's 60 pounds over AJ if he drops down to 230 for speed. And I just, I don't know if it's going to help AJ. But that would be the only way I could see AJ switching up is just to come in lighter and try to be faster on his feet to, to get to Fury. But I, I really think that if Fury keeps him at bay and dances around him for 12 rounds, it won't be much different in the second fight. Pretty much what I'm saying is whoever wins this first fight, unless it's just a first round, second round knockout, that's just a flash knockout, I don't see the second fight going much different than the first fight. However, these guys perform in the first one, it's pretty much going to be a carbon copy of how it's going to go the second time because both guys' strengths are the other guy's weakness. So what I mean by that is Fury being able to hit and move and get out the way, to me, is AJ's weakness. See, AJ's never really had to deal with that weakness because he's a big guy. He's 6'6". He's tall. Now he's actually having to use his feet to catch somebody much taller than him at 6'9". And I think people are going to be surprised about how easily Fury moves around him and how slow AJ's going to look. So, again, I don't, I don't see how it could go much different if Fury dances around him. However, with as good as AJ is putting combos together, if he can stay on Fury, I don't see how Fury can change much to beat AJ in the rematch because if AJ can stay on top of him, Fury's not going to get any faster. He could lose a little bit of weight, maybe pick up minimum amount of speed. But if AJ can stay on him, cut off the ring, and keep him in the pocket, I don't see any way Fury is going to improve enough from the first fight to the second fight to be able to beat AJ in the pocket. Could be wrong, but I just feel like AJ puts punches together way better than Fury. I feel like he throws a lot more straighter punches. He's got a lot better body torque with the weight. It's just Fury looks off balance a lot of times. He looks very sloppy with the way he throws his punches. Not all of his punches are clean thrown punches with like picture perfect precision like AJ is. If you were going to watch a tutorial on how to throw punches, you wouldn't watch Fury. You would watch AJ. And because of that, I just feel like there's nothing Fury really could do in the rematch to change it because AJ's just that much better in the pocket. That's how I see it. Either way it goes, I don't see it a draw. I'm not making my prediction right now in this video. I think in a few live panels I've been on, I've said who I think would win. But I'm not going to say that here. I'm going to say that for when the fight gets ready to happen. <clears throat> do a full breakdown show <coughs> throat just got hella dry show y'all the weaknesses in both of them and we'll go from there but again I have to disagree with Bernard Hopkins here I don't think it's going to be a draw on the first one I think it's going to be cut and dry for whoever wins it and the second one I see it going the same way as the first one regardless of who wins I see them winning the second time pretty much in the same fashion Thank y'all again for watching. Don't forget, sub to the channel. If you forget the thumbs up, just sub. And if you really don't know what to do, then just go ahead and give it a thumbs down. At least I know I've got people viewing, listening, staying to the end. So criticism is always, always invited. If you don't agree with me, don't just hit the thumbs up. Write it down in the comment section, and then we can converse back and forth. I try my best to respond to 100% of y'all. It's getting harder. I just literally gained over 100 subs in like a week and a half. That's the fastest I've ever gained subs. So it's getting harder and harder <coughs> for me to comment, but I will try my best. I don't think I've missed a person yet, so I will try not to miss you if you do leave a comment. Let me end on again Sunday, which is two days from now. 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be going live. It's Like always, it'll be an open panel. Anybody who wants to get on can get on, talk. I'm not even sure what I'm going to talk about. There's no boxing really going on. I mean, we got top rank. I think it's every Tuesday, Thursday, but their main event card just got nixed. So there's not a lot of boxing going on right now. 
a lot of the stuff that I know these YouTube channels like me and other ones are talking about is getting kind of repetitive because the information is drying up. But I feel like if you really love boxing, it's too much boxing to run out of stuff to talk about. So again, thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a good day. I'll see y'all on Sunday. I will not be dropping a video on Saturday. All right, y'all.